All right, thanks for watching. And now we're finally ready for the cornerstone theorem of analysis, the bolzano weierstrass theorem. And it says the following, even though a sequence may not converge, so it could be extremely wild, it turns out under some very mild condition that sequence has a convergent subsequence. In other words, even though a train may not lead to a destination, there's always an express train that converges to a certain limit. Okay. And without further ado, here's the theorem. And the beauty, it's in its simplicity. Namely, uh, if Sn is a bounded sequence, then Sn must have a convergent subsequence. In other words, all that this saying is, if Sn is trapped between two numbers, then even though it's itself it might not converge, because it is trapped between those two numbers, it turns out that it must have at least a, one convergent subsequence. And let me give you a little analogy for that. So suppose you're trapped in this room against some bounded set, and you're looking for a pair of scissors. Then you might never find that pair of scissors, maybe you threw it away. But on your path, you always cross this pen, and you're like, no, I'm not looking for this pen, I'm looking for the pair of scissors. Then, even though yourself might not fair find a pair of scissors, part of you always converges to this uh, pen, because you keep crossing it and you keep getting angry. And that's really the same thing. Even though the sequence itself might not converge, part of that sequence might do actually does converge to something. And by the way, this theorem is wrong for unbounded sequences because, for instance, if you take the sequence Sn equals n, well, this one just blows up and in fact, none of the subsequences converges to a finite number because every subsequence must go to infinity. All right, and now let's prove this. And the nice thing is we've already done the hard work last time. So now it just flows like butter. So proof, let Sn be a bounded sequence. And I would like to remind you, bounded means both bounded above and below. Then, the nice thing is, last time, so in a previous video, we've shown that if Sn is bounded, it must have a monotonic subsequence. Then, Sn must have a monotonic subsequence. SNK. And I like to remind you what does monotonic mean? It means either a non increasing or non decreasing. So think increasing or decreasing for our purposes. But then what do we have? So case one. So let's say SNK is a non decreasing. Then what do we have? Snk, it's non-decreasing and bounded above because Sn is bounded. And therefore, Snk must converge. Then since Snk is again non-decreasing and bounded above, by the monotone sequence theorem, SNK converges.
In other words, we found a subsequence of SM, namely SNK, that converges, at least in this case, but the other case is entirely similar. So case two, if SNK it's uh, non-increasing, then basically it's non-increasing and bounded below, so also it converges. So the point is this is similar. And therefore, in any case, we found a subsequence that is convergent. And this is very powerful. We'll see some applications, hopefully, when we'll do chapter three. Uh, all right, thank you very much.